Over 2,700 individuals participate in the International Pathfinder Camporee in Germany. Caleb Mission Initiative makes a significant impact in Puerto Rico. Barry Black completes 20 years of service as U.S. Senate Chaplain. Adventist youth in Vietnam engage in community service to assist those in need. These and other stories are coming up on ANN. The 14th Pathfinder Camporee for Southern and Western Europe occurred at Friedensau University in Germany from July 31 through August 5, 2023. This event, held every four years, brought together over 2,700 young individuals and leaders from 14 countries in the inter-European region. They spend a week sharing knowledge, engaging in outdoor adventures, scouting, and exploring their Christian faith under the theme, Follow Me, Share Your Story. The culminating moments were on Friday and Saturday nights, featuring a significant baptism ceremony where 14 young people dedicated their lives to Jesus, and there was a presentation of the Christian musical, Jesus the Musical. Blessed are all those in me, the foreign spirit sick in me, for the reign of God belongs to them. The youth director of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in the inter-European region, Jonathan Chehel, stressed the importance of young people having a personal encounter with Jesus, aiming for lives influenced by Him. Tehel shared his thoughts on the campery in a short interview. Well, uh, the most complicated thing always is the start. So we're in the second day, we're going up now, and then uh, we will reach the peak, I hope, on Friday evening, Sabbath morning, and then that's it, you know, the campery is over. But I'm feeling very, very positive about it. It's nice, you know, because uh, some delegations have come for the first time with a, a huge number of participants. And uh, that shows us that at least uh, this, this uh, sense of, of community, um, we, can, we can see it in these events, you know. And, and, and it's beautiful to be the, the, the difference in, in colors and in flags. And, and it's so nice to see the kids, you know, going around, having fun and enjoying the time. And then the most important thing is what happens during the night, you know, the night in the morning, the messages, at least for us as organizers. Of course, I mean, it's like um, home. If you had the possibility to go to a place that is, is part of your, your family, kind of, you know, it's, a, it's beautiful. A um, lot of friendly faces, a lot of friendly people. You, you can talk with everybody, ask whatever. And uh, I mean, it's nice. I wish, I'm not talking just about freedom, so, you know, but I wish that in the future we will have the possibility to do these kind of events in our own places. It feels different. Oh, 
I would like to say something, not, not to the young people right now. I would like to say something to uh, maybe the pastors that are listening. Don't give up. Even if ministry becomes difficult, keep on going. He will give you the strength uh, because sometimes the road is difficult. But with Jesus, everything is achievable. The city of Bafasum in Cameroon hosted the third National Congress for Adventist Women, uniting almost 1,200 attendees from across the country. The event was themed Clothed with Power from on High. I will reach out to my surroundings. The opening ceremony included speeches, a parade of participating delegations, and community service. As part of the event's community activities, a free market was set up to assist internally displaced individuals. Over 250 of them received food and clothing. The people who attended expressed their gratitude. Really, words fail me. This action was fulfilled because the food market today has become so unaffordable. Even for the average Cameroonian, let alone for these vulnerable people. Truly, I believe that through this action, the women of the Adventist Church have truly proved their love. The love of God. The love of Jesus. I don't know how to say thank you, because it's a way for you to support us in the work we already do every day. And we really hope that such actions will become a regular occurrence. Women undertook a range of activities, including a visit to Bafusam's regional hospital to offer prayers, hygiene supplies, and water to patients. They distributed Christian literature like tracts, Adventist magazines, and the missionary book of the year, The Great Controversy. The Congress concluded with awards and recognition for those contributing to its success. Hope Channel is excited to announce a new show set to air this fall that promises to warm your heart. Hope at Night is a late night show that seeks to answer thought-provoking questions through interviews with real people and incredible life stories to share. A live in-studio audience will get a chance to pose their own questions to the guests on air. This series will be hosted by speaker and author Anil Kanda. Hello and welcome to Hope at Night. We have an amazing episode tonight. Hope Channel President Derek Morris said, we are confident God will use this program to transform lives. The Advent Health Infield Care Center at Daytona International Speedway in Florida, United States, treats over 5,000 patients per year. Let's take a look inside this unique community hospital and find out how they care for drivers and fans alike. I am Mike Ponietowski. I am the operations manager for the Advent Health Care Centers at Daytona International Speedway. We are in the infield care center. I call it the heart of the inside of the Speedway. We take care of the patients that come to the Speedway for about 50 events per year, from the NASCAR races to the Rolex IMSA races. Anything that the Speedway wants us to staff for the emergency department here, we do, and we see 5,000 patients a year. The Daytona International Speedway is branded the World Center of Racing for a reason. We have it all and we do it all. We see everything from lacerations, cuts, cough due to cold as I call it, we have STEMIs, heart attacks, whatever a patient has out in the community they have here. Because we are a community hospital. That's 250,000 people in the Speedway. We are their healthcare center. It's very loud. Just like you think, 40 cars on the track at full throttle, we hear it right inside this care center. You step out the door, it's intense. So the drivers are very important. And of course, that's what makes NASCAR and IMSA run. So when they get into an accident, and they make contact with another vehicle or a wall, they're required to come into the info care center to be examined by our physicians. Very high energy and, and somewhat chaotic because you don't know what to expect with the number of competitors and the number of injuries. Within four to six minutes of them arriving, our medical team is waiting by the bedside. We have two nurses, we have an emergency physician, we have a NASCAR medical liaison, and we have a, a NASCAR neurologist who examine the patient from head to toe within about six minutes, and that includes a full neurological exam. This is the best job I've ever had in my life. I love it, and you know, we're proud to represent Advent Health. Thousands of people gathered for a short harvest series in Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic. Pastor Robert Costa, director of the Escrito Esta Ministry, was the main speaker at the event organized by the Seventh-day Adventist Church in the Southeast region. All of the churches in this region are holding simultaneous evangelistic meetings for a month. With this initiative, Adventist leaders in the Dominican Republic expect to win souls for Christ. 
The second stage of the evangelistic campaign will have new international guests. The event will culminate with the grand celebration of gratitude for the 25th anniversary of the Adventist Church in the Southeast region, accompanied by a great harvest of baptisms. During this event, Dominican pastors and laity are demonstrating their fervor and commitment to fulfilling the mission. Let's go to Southeast Asia, specifically Vietnam. In Ho Chi Minh City, Adventist youth launched a community service event aimed at supporting underprivileged members of the community. Organized by the Phu Nguyen Youth Association, the initiative featured a cooking program that provided 250 servings of porridge and distributed missionary books to workers and homeless individuals. The outreach inspired involvement from Adventist members within the church and local community, fostering a culture of compassion, unity, and active participation. Witnessing the impact of simple acts of kindness, church members were reminded of the extension of God's love to the world through their actions. Ain't an In-Depth is a program that offers an in-depth and analytical exploration of today's topics, featuring discussions with professionals within the Adventist Church. This week, Alyssa Truman, the director of ANN News, engages in a discussion with Anthony Kent, editor of Elder's Digest and associate ministerial secretary for the Adventist World Church. They delve into the role and responsibility of local church elders within the Seventh-day Adventist Church. I think elders, deacons, deaconesses are so significant. Um, you know, the, what they do is just extraordinary. You, you asked about their specific roles of elders, what, what we're looking for in elders. Well, first of all, they need to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Somebody who loves, adores, and, and is following Jesus. Um, there's, there's a level of commitment there, do, do, do you know, which it's, it's a demanding role. And so the commitment needs to be commensurate with that. We're, we're also looking for, for people who can lead and, and make an impact in the local church that are respected by the local church because an elder to function they need to be elected by the local church and ordained. It's two important criteria. And so by being elected, it's an indicator of the respect and regard and the recognition of the qualifications of that individual. And certain people will bring certain strengths to the role mm -hmm. depending on the, the spiritual giftedness of each individual elder. So now, elders have a, have a service, though, where there's an actual ordination service. Why do we do that service? What, what is the differentiation? We don't do this with our Sabbath school teacher. What, what is, why do we see the role of an elder in a different light? Well, looking through the, the whole biblical text from Genesis to Revelation, elders are very significant. They, in ancient Israel, the elders, they, they had a huge uh, pull on the people. You know, they, they led the people. They influenced the people. And it's, it's the same today. In the New Testament, when, when Paul and Barnabas, when they were on their missionary journeys, they weren't just about baptizing and leading people to Jesus they left those people in the care of elders, which is really crucial. They, the elder's role, as it was back in those days, it still is today, to spiritually care for and nurture people, to lead them closer to Jesus, to lead them in their understanding of the word, their understanding and experience of Jesus Christ. After the break, We'll be right back with news from around the world where Adventists are impacting their communities with the good news of Jesus Christ. One of the things that I like to do here in Washington, D.C. is on Valentine's Day to go down to Union Station and give long stem roses to the bag ladies, to the beggars. Ah. Oh. For as often as you have done it unto the least of these, you have done it unto me. The 
I'm Kenya Reyes from the Bible Help Desk Show. Weekly, we get to dive into the Word of God and see how He transformed so many lives in the past, but we know that He continues transforming lives today. If your life has been impacted by the power of God, we would love to hear your story. Give us a call at 833-BIBLE-HD, or you can email us at biblehelpdesk at hopetv.org. Did you know elephants are some of the most emotionally intelligent animals on earth? We often think of wild animals as having little emotion or capacity to love, but elephants defy this. For example, they love playing together in friendly tussles with their family. And it's not just the play that's intriguing, it's that they seem to experience joy from it. They're also known to have strong family bonds, even displaying empathy and love toward each other. In fact, you rarely see elephants by themselves. They enjoy the companionship of their family. In fact, when a member of the herd dies, the others will even hold a burial ceremony and mourn the loss. This capacity for emotion is a beautiful reminder of the God of love who gave even elephants the capacity to love. My brother's unexpected death shocked me into changing my life. A friend of mine said, why don't you do a triathlon? So I swam and rode and ran until I discovered life is more than just human strength. I race because my health matters. I believe because my faith matters. I'm Ed, I'm a Christian, I am an Iron Man, and I've discovered my whole life matters. Just confuse you. Naomi, what's wrong? I. We have to go now. A group of 19 young Seventh-day Adventists from across Puerto Rico participated in a mission impact trip and table tennis tournament in Utado, a mountainous municipality in the central northern part of the island. During their visit, they engaged in various community service activities, such as distributing food to low-income families, cleaning streets, painting homes, mowing lawns, and visiting government agencies and homes. They also hosted two youth evangelism series where they shared missionary books, offered prayers, and provided hot meals. This initiative, called Caleb Mission, is part of the Seventh-day Adventist Church's evangelistic program that involves young people in social and witnessing activities during their summer vacation. The group organized a table tennis tournament, which drew 65 players and numerous community members as spectators. The event began with music and a special devotional led by the Caleb Mission Team. Winners received medals and the audience was invited to watch the Seventh-day Adventist Church's evangelistic film, Spin, which was followed by over 120 people registering for Bible studies. Barry C. Black completed 20 years as chaplain of the United States Senate in Washington, D.C. Black, who will turn 75 this year, arrived at that position after an extensive career as a United States Navy chaplain. Black is the first military chaplain, the first Seventh-day Adventist, and the first African American to hold the office of chaplain to the United States Senate. One of his most remembered prayers at the U.S. Senate was in the early hours of January 7, 2021, a day after the incidents that resulted in the death of four people. 
The New York Times and other national outlets quoted these words of his, We deplore the desecration of the United States Capitol building, the shedding of innocent blood, the loss of life, and the quagmire of dysfunction that threaten our democracy. His historical supplication ended with a special request to God, Use us to bring healing and unity to our hurting and divided nation and world. During a virtual camp meeting, the chaplain of the United States Senate shared the message, how can we have a close encounter with Jesus? He ended by showing another of his skills as he sang, have thine own way, Lord. And daily, praise God, daily to say, have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Thou art the potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will while I am waiting. Yielded and still, thy will be done. Hope Channel India is grateful to God for a year of blessed operations. With impactful programs that emphasize God's mercy, the broadcasts have reached millions of people in India. Hapur Studio is especially designed to high quality Christian television programming for Hindi language and 18 major languages of Northern India with potential audience of 750 million. The spirit-filled programs are more powerfully proclaimed for God's mercy and hope to a dejected world. Thank you for your faithful prayers and financial support. You make that difference in the lives of people. As we stretch the reach of the gospel to the largest audience possible, join with us in sharing the gospel message to the billions of people in India. The following video presents a production by Hope Channel India where hundreds of individuals gathered in Chandigarh state to hear the word of God. Chhattisgarh is an underdeveloped area in India. Hindu, a majority in Chhattisgarh state. Hinduism constitutes 93.25% of Chhattisgarh population, while Christian population in Chhattisgarh is 1.92% with fasting and prayers we decided to conduct major evangelistic meetings in chhattisgarh in an open ground in april the groundwork was done by the local pastors and lay volunteers from january to march few days before the meetings there was a conflict between the extremists and the government few police officers and military officials died and the government called off all the meetings. With tears and sadness, we canceled the meetings. The meetings were conducted in 10 villages around the meeting place. The local church members never let their faith and passion for God's work go down. By God's grace, another door opened when peace settled in the region again. An evangelistic meeting was conducted from June 7th to 11th. People from 10 villages flocked to hear the messages. Each day, around 800 to 1,000 people gathered to hear God's word. Heartland College organized a two-week mental health training program in Buka, Ukraine. The event took place on the campus of the Ukrainian Institute of Arts and Sciences. Initiated by preacher and evangelist Mark A. Finley, this training was designed to provide psychological assistance and mental health basics to Ukrainians, particularly in light of the Russian invasion of the country. The course attracted 60 participants from diverse backgrounds, including pastors, psychologists, chaplains, and individuals interested in community service. Over the two weeks, participants learned skills to aid in crisis situations, manage post-traumatic stress disorder, and provide effective spiritual support. Attendees praise the blend of biblical principles and contemporary psychological methods in the training. 
Sergei Lutuski, head of the Health and Chaplaincy Ministries Department of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Ukraine, highlighted the positive feedback from the Heartland College team and the participants, emphasizing their eagerness to learn in this unique training opportunity. Radio Nuevo Tiempo in Peru acquired its latest station through the contribution of the Adventist Church worldwide, including supporters from South America and Peru. This achievement was made possible by the efforts of the 2022 Nuevo Tiempo Annual Offering. Broadcasting on 103.3 FM, Radio Nuevo Tiempo holds the power to impact the lives of its daily listeners through its message of salvation in Christ Jesus. One testament to this impact unfolded in Lima, the capital city of Peru. A woman named Marlini crossed paths with Brian, who not only offered her a job on a small urban bus, but also encouraged her to tune in to Radio Nuevo Tiempo via her cell phone. Marlene's life took a transformative turn as she absorbed the messages broadcast on the radio station. The station's signal accompanies her through the public transportation routes she works, thus bringing a message of hope to the passengers. Marlene received Bible studies and was recently baptized. She is grateful for having access to the radio that is changing her life and the lives of those who tune in. This week, our music highlight comes from China. Yu Jun interprets O Come O Come Emmanuel on the Gu Zheng, a traditional Chinese stringed instrument. She is part of the Chinese Union Mission of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Thank you for watching ANN. Join us next week for more news from the headquarters of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Did you know the Seventh-day Adventist Church has a YouTube channel where you can watch ANN video, ANN in depth, and plenty of other amazing videos on prophecy, health, and Bible study? Just go to YouTube and search for the Adventist Church. Make sure you click the subscribe button so you never miss a new video. And remember, leave a comment or a prayer request. We have a team dedicated to praying for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Before we say goodbye, we'll leave you with some good news from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29, verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. That's our program for this week. And remember, you can always visit Adventist.news for daily news and videos. Until next time, when we will have more news of faith, love, and hope. God bless.